The Blue Beetle. Sweeping down upon the underworld to smash Ganglin comes the mysterious, all-powerful character who is a problem to the police, but a crusader for law. In reality, Dan Garrett, a rookie patrolman, loved by everyone, but suspected by none of being the Blue Beetle. As the Blue Beetle, he hides behind a strange mask and a suit of impenetrable blue chain armor, flexible as silk, but stronger than steel. Today's episode of the Fox feature, The Blue Beetle, is the second half of a story entitled Smashing the Restaurant Racket. In the previous episode, Patrolman Dan Garrett learns that the Cosmopolitan Restaurant Owners Association, which has been formed ostensibly by restaurant owners to protect themselves against outlaw strikes, is in reality an organization formed by a group of crooks to extract money from the restaurant owners. In search of evidence and the individual who is the power behind the racket, Dan Garrett, as the Blue Beetle, visits the Cosmopolitan headquarters and encounters two supposedly rival union heads who are working together. By means of a trick, the Blue Beetle is imprisoned in a clothes closet, and as the episode ended, the racketeers were fleeing after setting fire to the building. As our story opens today, the Blue Beetle, having freed himself and also rescued Joan Mason of the Chronicle, whom he found imprisoned in another room, has carried her to the roof of an adjoining building. She is just regaining consciousness. Oh, where am I? You're safe. You're on the roof of the building next to the one where I found you. The fireman will be here any minute. The Blue Beetle? Yes, and you're Joan Mason. What were you doing in that building? Trying to get some information from my newspaper about the restaurant racket. Who locked you in that room? By Gibbons. He discovered me looking over some of the association's private papers and locked me in. Said he'd deal with me later. Did you find out who is in back of this racket? Yes, Randall S. Stanford. Civic leader and road construction contractor? Yes. He's in with some powerful politicians. They're planning to use the money they collect from the restaurant owners to buy votes in the coming election and to oust the present administration. Are you sure? Positive. I have some of the incriminating letters here in my bag. That's great. Hey, there's somebody on the roof there. Hello. Hi, Don, right? That's Officer Manigan, one of the firemen. You saved my life again, Blue Beetle. It's getting to be a habit. How can I ever repay you? Keep those papers hidden until I give you the word. That will help me smash this restaurant right Hey, there, are you all right? Hey, that looks like the Blue Beetle. It is the Blue Beetle. Hello, Manigan. Sorry I can't stay to help you. Take care of this girl here. He's worth a lot of money to the citizens of this city. Well, Danny, the Blue Beetle had a close shave last night. Yes, but it was worth it. Uh, It was lucky for Joan Mason that you were in the building. And unlucky for a certain Mr. Danforth. What are you going to do? According to the newspapers, Mr. Danforth is entertaining the mayor at lunch today, after which they'll discuss certain projects for civic betterment. The Blue Beetle is going to drop a bombshell in front of Mr. Danforth at that conference. Well, Danforth, you ought to be complimented on your excellent cook. That was one of the best lunches I ever ate. (laughs) You should be a good judge of food, Mr. Mayor. You get around to a lot of banquets. Yes, but (laughs) I don't get much chance to enjoy them. Well, now I'd I'd like to show you some plans I've drawn up for a safer highway to completely encircle the city. Well, that sounds like an expensive project. Yes, but think of the benefit it will be to the city. It will relieve traffic congestion and facilitate uh, travel to and from vacation spots. But I think money spent for playgrounds for the youngsters and swimming pools and improvements in our parks would uh, benefit more people, especially the poor and the underprivileged class. Your sentiments do you justice, Mr. Mayor. My heart also goes out to the poorer citizens and their children living in cheap tenements and having few places to enjoy some of the benefits the more fortunate of us enjoy. But after Hypocrite. all... But, 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 who was that? The Blue Beetle. What are you doing here? Who admitted you to my home? No one. The Blue Beetle enters where he pleases. 
When there's a crime to be solved or a criminal to be unmasked. Well, then, what are you doing here? The mayor and I are discussing plans for civic betterment. Yes, while secretly you, Danforth, and your gang of extortionists are milking the restaurant owners of money to be used in a political campaign to oust the mayor and the present administration. Well, you must be crazy to make such an accusation. Yes, why, Mr. Danforth has sponsored many projects for improving living conditions in this city. Out of which his construction company has made millions. Well, naturally, but everything has been legitimate. Perhaps, but not this restaurant racket. Oh. I can't believe it possible. I know, Blue Beetle, what you have done to reduce crime in this city, and I am grateful, but your present accusations are outrageous. Where is your proof? If you're interested, I'll take you to someone who has letters and documents to prove that Randall S. Danforth there is the real power behind the Cosmopolitan Restaurant Owners Association. An out-and-out out racket. That's a line. I'll stand for no more such accusations. I'll have you thrown out. I'll have the police... Wait. Who is the person who claims to have this proof? Joan Mason of the York City Chronicle. That girl who... Yes. Where is this girl now? At her home. I telephoned her to wait there for a call from me. I'll go with you immediately. A care to face your accuser, Danforth? Well, I'll face her in court. Meanwhile, I'm going to get in touch with my lawyer. I'll put Joan Mason on the blue beetle behind bars. <laughs> It will go hard with you, Blue Beetle, if Joan Mason doesn't substantiate your charges. Danforth is a rich and powerful man, as well as a respectable citizen. Don't worry, Mr. Mayor. Here's the place. Yeah. What are all the police doing here? I took the precaution of phoning the police that Miss Mason was in danger before I visited Danforth tonight. But why? I figured he'd order some of his hirelings to do away with her as soon as I disclosed who... His accuser was. Well, if it ain't the Blue Beetle. And he's with his honor, the mayor, of all things. What happened, Manigan? We caught two thugs trying to break into Miss Mason's apartment. We just sent them away in the patrol wagon. There you are, Mayor. Well, I never have believed it. Officer Manigan, come along with us. You're about to make an important arrest. You mean the Blue Beetle? No, I mean Randall S. Stanforth. Good evening. Oh, it's his honor, the mayor. Uh, where is your master, Mr. Danforth? Uh, sorry, sir, but he left hastily. Took some papers and a change of linen. Where is he going? He didn't say exactly, sir. He muttered something about business interests in Mexico. That's all I want to know. Come on, Blue Beetle. And you too, Manigan. My plane's at the airport. I'll take personal charge of this case myself. Any signs of a plane? There's something off there to the right. I'll give it a little more gas. You're a good pilot, Your Honor. I was a pilot in the last World War. How will we recognize Danforth's plane? Well, he has an insignia painted on his fuselage, typical of his business. Cross shovels bisected by a crowbar. A double cross. Very fitting. Why did you insist on leaving Manigan behind? Afraid he'd get airsick. Oh. I'll take another look with the binoculars. Yes, that's the plane, all right. We're overhauling her. How do you intend apprehending Danforth? You'll maneuver this plane alongside his. I'll climb out on the wing and transfer to his plane. But that will be extremely dangerous. Danger is my middle name. Are you sure your parachute's on securely? Everything's shipshape. Now hold her as steady as you can, Mayor. I'm going out on the wing. Be careful, Blue Beetle. He may dive or sideslip. Okay. Miss me, Danforth. That's your last chance. I'm coming after you. Wait, Blue Beetle. Danforth's bailing out. There he goes. And here I go after him. Why doesn't Danforth pull the ripcord of his parachute? He's diving to certain death. And the Blue Beetle's diving after him. The Blue Beetle's parachute has opened, but 
Danforth has failed to open. It's it's too late now. He's paying for his sins. The Blue Beetle can chalk up another victory. Well, Danny, you had a distinguished pilot this afternoon. Yes, and a good one. Uh, what about the other ringleaders in the restaurant racket? The police rounded them up, working under the personal direction of the mayor. Is there enough evidence to convict them? Yes, the papers Joan Mason saved from the fire were very incriminating. Then the uh, culprits will be brought to justice. And the restaurant owners of this city will be free from danger of property damage and personal injury. Yes, thanks to the Blue Beetle, the restaurant racket is smashed. <laughs> The moral of this story is that power and money, and even good reputation, if used for criminal purposes, will always be found out and defeated. Further adventures of Patrolman Dan Garrett as the Blue Beetle will be presented in the next episode of The Blue Beetle. who is a problem to the police, but a crusader for law. In reality, Dan Garrett, a rookie patrolman, loved by everyone, but suspected by none of being the Blue Beetle. As the Blue Beetle, he behind a strange mask and a suit of impenetrable blue chain armor, flexible as silk, but stronger than steel. 